Today, we'll be recreating the following shot from Jordan Peele's most recent horror film, Nope. In the movie, it's actually longer, but this is all I can find. The movie is awesome. It touches on the idea of spectacle. The, the word that we said the most was spectacle, and this industry and business of spectacle. Okay, so how are we gonna remake this scene from the movie? Well, if you haven't seen my video about how to design an AR app, you should check it out, because we will be following the principles outlined there. So one, what's my goal? Well, the goal is really to just recreate this beautiful shot from the movie. It's beautiful, aesthetic, but at the same time, simple. Two, what's the idea? Well, the idea is to recreate the shot with my own stylistic flair, but also trying to stay true to the original, just a little bit. And three, how do we break this down? Let's take a look. First things first, it's a simple shot. We've got our hero, the balloon, and we've got our context, which are the clouds and the sunset. We also have a camera that's shaking a little bit and rotating around our hero. I'm thinking the hero and the clouds are 3D assets, but the clouds in the sky in the back are a matte painting. Matte paintings are often used in films as backdrops to replace something that isn't there or doesn't need to move much. Troopers, and nobody knows that it's a map painting. You just assume that this is a very large set. Okay, so the scene was probably arranged like this. We have our map painting in the back. We have our hero somewhere in the middle. We have clouds surrounding the hero. And we have the camera focused on the hero with a deep depth of field where a lot of things are kind of in focus. First, I'll go through a very quick run through of how I did it in Blender, and then we'll go through a comparable and much quicker version in After Effects. Here we go! First, I needed my hero, but instead of making the balloon from the movie, I decided to choose my own hero. After looking at tons of reference images, I was ready to start modeling. I kept fudging up the beak, but I finally got something that I was okay with. I inflated the model via cloth simulation and applied the results. Then I sculpted the balloon along the areas where pockets of air might accumulate. And then I placed a rubber duck in the new scene. Okay, boom, done. Next, I searched for a backdrop image that I could use as my matte painting. Import it as a plane using the images as planes add-on and the range in the scene. Okay, boom, done. Next, I needed to place my camera to set up the shot. Good enough. Okay, boom, done. Next, I needed to create clouds and this was a lot harder than I expected. I hadn't done this before. After knowing my buddy Dennis, who does amazing VFX, and scouring forums and YouTube for the best cloud strategy, I found that CG Cookie's tutorial on clouds for Eevee was my best bet. So I needed to use Eevee to make this as quick as possible, but potentially at the cost of realism. The node tree is a bit complicated, but the basic idea as taught by CG Cookie is to create a base shape that gets more cloud-like with layers of noise. After many, 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 many attempts, I finally got something that I kind of liked and something that matched my backdrop. Volumes in Eevee are notoriously dark. To make them brighter in this case, I added a volume absorption parameter and added it as an additional shader node to the principal volume node, which combined made things look better almost immediately. Then all you gotta do is arrange the clouds in the main scene. Okay, boom, done. Next, I need a good lighting. For the clouds to look good, you need to set a good HDRI as the environment texture. At least one that also matches the backdrop and one that really highlights the colors that you want to come out in the scene. I found one from Polyhaven's HDRI options that are royalty free. You need to make sure that the sun is set to a color and brightness that match the reference image. And also to your own stylized liking. And then add a couple of lights to help the clouds fill up and get a little brighter. Okay, boom, done. Next, I needed to add the smoke simulation to add some dynamics to the scene. A little bit of a mist as if the cloud was dispersing a little bit. After some experimentation, I chose to make the smoke sim independently, render it under a transparent background, and import it into my scene as an animated plane. This is advantageous for two reasons. The first is that Blender's smoke simulations can be a little bit buggy, so rendering a complex scene can be a bit tedious. The second is that if we render it independently and import it as an animated plane, then the computations on our main scene are reduced, and we can move the plane with the animation around in almost real time. Okay, boom, done. For smoke, the most important things that you need to make realistic smoke or mist are the noise attribute, adding an external force, and if you want slow acting smoke, reducing the time steps. Okay, boom, done. Next, I needed to rotate my camera just a little bit, just like in the real shot from the movie, and add a little bit of shake to make it a little bit more realistic. I downloaded the camera Shakeify add-on, imported it, and changed some settings to my liking. I created a dummy cube and parented the camera to it. 
then they animated the rotation of the cube, which then, as a result, animated the camera. Okay, boom, done. Next, to render, I changed the volumetric settings. Volumetric lighting tile size was set to 2 pixels, samples were set to 256, and the volumetric shadow samples to 128, which I think is the highest it can go. I changed the light clamping to 20 because sometimes I get green flashes or flickers during my renders. To fix these, you can also change the camera clip starter or end and remove bloom and motion blur. Sometimes this isn't enough. And you can keep messing with the settings to get the result that you want. But if the flickers are small enough, you can probably fix them in post. Then all you have to do is hit render. Okay, boom, done. Now, is there an easier way to do this that's faster and comparable? This is now. We live in an amazing time. The pixels on your screen are transformed from zeros and ones. The travel is light in fiber optic cables. Traveling or coming back. To the answer is yes. You can get comparable results in After Effects without having to model complex clouds, nor having to wait for long render times. First, Find the Blender to After Effects add-on. There's a link in the description for it. Download it, go to Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and select the file. Select all the objects in your scene that you want exported. Go to File, Export, and hit that After Effects option. After this is done, hide all other objects in your Blender scene from the Render view. Go to the Film drop-down in Render Settings and select Transparent. In Render Settings, make sure you have PNG selected. Hit Render. In After Effects, go to File, Scripts, Run Script, and select the file we just made in Blender. Go to File again and hit Import File, and import your PNG sequence. Now add that precomp to your main comp. You can't see anything because the lights we imported are way too bright, so just disable them. Now we have the skeleton for our animation. Okay, boom, done. To summarize, we exported a file with camera, light, and object information. We also exported a PNG image sequence of our main hero shot on the transparent background. And all we have to do now is import the transparent PNGs of the clouds. You can easily find clouds that are royalty free by Googling clouds transparent PNG or something like that. Download and import them into your scene, make them 3D objects, make some duplicates and play around with the rotations and positions. Once you like what you've made, add a new light or use the lights you imported and move them around the scene with a color that matches the sunset. I use a reddish color for some of the point lights. Then, I use my area light as an ambient light to add some fill to the entire shot by subtracting the complementary color, swamp green, from my scene. Using the same method, I replicated my references bluish cloud shadows. Here, I use a red orange as my complementary color. Okay, boom, done. Next, for the music, I decided to make a suspenseful transition. To do this, I first jammed with myself until I found some chords that I like. I arranged the chords into high strings and low strings. Then I added low octave brass instruments to play the root notes. Together, they sounded like this. Then for the transition into black, I added a ring sweep and a crescendo of dissonant string notes. Together, they sounded like this. Then, to add some tension and what could, in theory, be a rhythmic motif for this fictional scene, I added staccato cello and brass chords to pulsate us into the black. Together, they sounded like this. Then, to cue the scene's start, I used two impact samples that left a high frequency ring. Finally, to master, I threw in a multiband compressor. Then another gentle compressor to lift things up a tiny bit more. And then finally, a limiter, just to be safe. Okay, boom, done. To tie the suspenseful spooky music to the render, we have to color grade. For the blender scene, I first added some contrast and saturation to the scene. Desaturated my ducks yellows, added a red sunset gradient on the left, and a blue shadow gradient on the right. Enhanced the darks a bit, added a glow to replace the bloom we omitted in Blender. A vignette to direct our eyes and some curve adjustments to reach the final pseudo spooky look. Similarly, for the After Effects scene, I added some contrast to the scene first, then desaturated the duck's yellows, then brightened the duck up a little. Added a reddish sunset gradient from the left and the bluish shadow gradient on the right. Added a little bit of glow, a vignette, and some curve adjustments to balance the darks and the brights. Okay, boom, done. Now, let's see them all. 
together. So which is better, Blender or After Effects? I honestly love both and they both serve complementary purposes. If I'm in a rush and can't wait for long render times, I'd probably do what I did in this video. I would do quick modeling in Blender and then compositing in After Effects, potentially at the cost of realism and cloud customizability. However, this scene was simple. It only involved one camera shot. If I'm interested in something more complex, I think that Blender would give me the most flexibility. I mean... I could have done the compositing in Blender. However, if you're an enthusiast like me, then you have to strategize on how you want to leverage your existing skill sets and how you want to strengthen your weaknesses. In this case, I hadn't attempted clouds before in Blender, so I got to learn something new. Overall, the shots aren't the most realistic and maybe are a tad bit overproduced, but I'm pretty happy with the results of both. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like button. If you want to help the YouTube algorithm, also make sure to leave a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, more tutorials, more concept pieces, please hit that subscribe button. Okay, boom, done.